Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another walkthrough for Demon Souls Remake. This time we're going to go through the first stage of the game in the first Archstone, uh, the Gates of Boletaria, better known as level 1-1. Before we do that, however, we're going to spend some souls with uh, Blacksmith Baldwin here, and we're going to upgrade our sword. We're going to repair it first. We're going to upgrade our sword using the bonus uh, materials we earn from killing Vanguard. If you did not kill Vanguard, that's okay. Um, it's quite all right. It's just a small upgrade going to plus one. Um, and we have those materials again because we uh, killed Vanguard. All right, so we're also going to talk to Stockpile Thomas. And we are going to put some stuff in the bank here. Uh, the shards and your upgrade materials take up space, uh, which really stinks. <laughs> Straight up, it's, it's not good. I wish those were weightless, uh, but they're not. However, in the remake of the game, having um, having equipment burden isn't as punishing. In the original game, if you picked something up and it was going to go over your equipment burden, it would automatically drop the item. And if you were not able to, you know, trash any unwanted items and you really needed the item that got automatically dropped, you would lose it forever. In the remake, however, if you cannot carry an item due to uh, item burden, uh, it will just automatically go to the bank, which is extremely helpful. And some sort of like story weapons that you pick up in the game, such as the Dragonbone Smasher or Isterel or the Great Sword of Moonlight, uh, you won't be able to pick them up um, without having enough space. So nice change, but I still like to go into levels with as little equipment burden as possible. So this is level 1-1, Boletaria. And I'm gonna put my armor back on just to sort of make things easier. That was a nice kill. Uh, one thing I wanna talk about here, I'm just kill this zombie, that's so why he doesn't bother us. Uh, one thing that I wanna talk about here is this gate. This gate right here only opens if you have pure white or pure black world tendency. So I have a, a really full guide on what this mechanic is and how you can manipulate it and what it means. Um, but you can see here in the tendency screen, all of my worlds right now are in a neutral state and my character has neutral character tendency. If you get pure white or pure black world tendency uh, in a specific world, things happen. Paths become available such as this gate will open in pure white or pure black. Um, in Tower of Latria, the third world, Archstone of the Tower Queen, if you get pure white world tendency, you gain access to a key to a specific cell, and then rescuing that person allows you to open up another area of the prison for an armor set. It also clears some rubble from another path. Like, things change in the world. It's a bit of a confusing mechanic, uh, but this gate will not open unless you get pure white and pure or pure black world tendency, so don't worry about trying to find a key. It's based on world tendency. Uh, I will link my full tendency guide in the description. Uh, so you can click that for a more thorough explanation. But the gist of it is, is that killing bosses gives you points towards white world tendency. Killing NPCs gives you points towards black world tendency. Um, and then uh, dying while in body form um, gives you, or pushes you towards black world tendency. So that's kind of the gist, uh, but there are ways to manipulate it further than that. And it's a sliding scale, so if you're at pure white and you die in body form, you will go to white, you'll lose a point. And then if you're black, or if you have pure black world tendency and you kill a boss, then you will move one point towards uh, white. So it's, it's sort of like a sliding scale. Um, yeah, so that's sort of the brief explanation, but it's a it's a bit of an arcane system that it really is not explained at all in the game. Uh, it's not given any context, really. Um, and I was a little surprised by that in the remake that they didn't change the, that fact, that it's still not explained at all. Um, but, you know, it's a one-to-one -one remake. They really stuck with that for the most part. Okay, so now that all these zombies are dead, we can pick up some items and pick up some fire bombs and some pine resin. And those items should give you some indication that uh, fire is going to be very, very useful uh, in this stage. So we have a crossbow 
enemy right here, along with a couple dreglings. So we're gonna bait out the dreggling really fast. Because that crossbowman can be, oh my god, can be quite deadly. I gotta get out of here. I gotta heal. Sweet Jesus. Alright, bait out the dragling one more time. Jesus. Yeah, interrupt him. Oh my god, the wrong thing is happening right now. I kept pressing forward in R1 and doing the punch. I didn't want to do that. Okay, now that they are dead, we can go kill the crossbow enemy right here. There's a pit right here. You gotta be very careful for that. It's bright and shiny, making it look like uh, you should just jump in after everything in there, but it'll kill you. Okay, so... In here, there's an enemy sort of tucked away in hiding. Be very careful with him. Give him the quick R2, the quick how do you do. Another dragon is going to pop out here. Jesus Christ. Their sort of flail attack is honestly like the most devastating attack in the game. <laughs> it's really, really nasty. Okay, so there's another dragling here. Great. And then... We're sort of safe here for a second, so let's go ahead and roll through here and just break these up and we get some more fire bombs. The fire bombs are going to be incredibly effective against the boss of this world, uh, which is Phalanx. So, you want to do your best to conserve them as much as you can. Okay, kill those guys and then go through the fog door. The fog wall, I should say. Okay, so... This guy's gonna throw a firebomb. We're gonna... It's gonna miss us. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to go down here and collect these treasures. So we have an unknown warrior soul here. And the souls that you pick up uh, off the ground are used as sort of a form of, like, banked currency. So every time you kill an enemy, you get souls just added to your total. Uh, but those can be lost upon death. And, you know, when you die, you drop a bloodstain. Um, oh, wow. The gunpowder didn't blow up. That's funny. That guy should have killed himself. Um, and, you know, if, if you die and then you are unable to reach your blood stain, you lose all the souls that you had accumulated. Oh, Jesus. I thought he was behind us. <laughs> Whoops. All right. So we're sort of pinched right here, but as long as we're quick, we're okay. Um, but the souls that you pick up off the ground, they are sort of like a form of, like, banked currency. Meaning that they will stay in your inventory until you use them. So the souls that you pick up are really useful for, like, bridging the gap when you're leveling. So just say you need, like, 700 souls to level, but you only have 500, you know, on your person. Oh, God. Then, you know, popping one of those currency souls, um, is a good way to sort of bridge that gap and, and catch up. All right. So there's a booby trap here. There's a boulder. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk up the stairs, wait for him to roll it, and then we go down. All right. And falling there is intended because that actually opens this up for a bastard sword. We're not going to use the bastard sword, though. It's really not that great. It's quite heavy. Uh, but now we can go back around. And then we'll pick up a treasure over here. Some more grass, and now that the ball has been rolled, we can walk up here and fight this guy. And of course, he has a firebomb, because who doesn't have a firebomb in this stage? Okay, so I'm gonna take care of this crossbow enemy here. <clears throat> My voice just gave out. Uh, and there's a few enemies over here, but they are not worth killing at all, because the, go into photo mode here, this building right here is the mausoleum. And you can see, sort of in the center of the screen, uh, a red-eye knight who is incredibly powerful. And we don't have the mausoleum key, so there's no point in going over here just yet. And there's a spear enemy, you know, guarding the door. Spear enemies are a little tough, so we're just going to skip that for now. And then we are going to fight this blue-eye knight. And we're going to try to get a backstab on him really quick. Great. And then we hit him once. That's good. Oh, that stinks. <laughs> he lost his treasure. It's okay. Let's go down here. Oh, you know what's funny? I never knew how to do this. That's so funny. I never actually thought to look down there. Anyway, there's going to be a firebomb throwing knight here. That's how you get onto his platform. Man, 
We're finding things out together in these tutorials. In all my years of playing Demon Souls, I have never once done that. Okay. So, I'm going to just run back up here. Start with a little detour. I'm actually really happy that that happened. Never knew to do that. Um, the Mausoleum Key, getting back to that. The Mausoleum Key is dropped by Ostrava of Bulletaria, who's an NPC that we're going to meet very soon. Um, and Ostrava Bulletaria is an NPC that we kind of need to continuously rescue. If you're familiar with Dark Souls, uh, he's a little similar to... Um, oh my god. Uh, the Onion Knight. What is his name? Siegmeier of Katarina. Um, <laughs> he's similar to Siegmeier in the sense that like he's always getting into trouble and we always got to save him. Um, however, uh, we can kill him and get the mausoleum key ourselves, but this is going to be a bit of like a normal playthrough, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, I, I will just let him live. Okay, so that guy drops there. And right here, this is actually something pretty interesting. These chains are holding up corpses, and there's treasure on these corpses, so we need to break these chains. And one of the treasures is a trinket that we can give to Stockpile Thomas in exchange for a ring. So that's what we're going to do. And this path that we're on right now is going to unlock a shortcut. So, you know, God forbid you die. Um, you won't have to go through that entire left area that we just went up. If you come down here and you kill all these draglings, uh, you can unlock a shortcut by raising a portcullis. And that gives you access to the cling ring, which is a ring that gives you uh, more health while in soul form. And I'll explain that mechanic in a minute. So these guys are supposed to fall off at some point. This isn't going how I wanted to. Okay, kill that one. Yeah, okay, good. They dropped off. Uh, so, when you are in soul form versus body form, your HP is reduced, let's just say by half. It, it changes depending on a couple different mechanics, but let's just say it's, it's cut in half. And if you use the cling ring, then it is cut maybe by like 25% instead of 50%. So I'll show you what I mean here. So you just pull this lever, this opens the two portcullises here. And then on this corpse is the cling ring. So, equipping the cling ring, since it's the only other ring we have, this increases our health while in, in soul form. Okay, so we got the old ragged set and then the jade hair ornament. The jade hair ornament is what we need to give to Stockpile Thomas for the ring of Herculean strength, which uh, increases our equipment burden, I think. Um, but you can see now, I have more health than I did. That little uh, sort of bar in my health bar, the sort of vertical bar, is further to the right. And if we unequip the cling ring, then it's further to the left. So that is what I mean by it gives you more health uh, in soul form. It reduces the amount of reduction. Uh, the amount of health that you have in soul form is also affected by your character tendency. So killing certain you know, NPCs and doing certain things will affect your character tendency. And the closer to black that your character tendency is, uh, the, the less health you will have in soul form, and then vice versa. The closer you are to white character tendency, the more health you have in soul form. It's kind of a minuscule amount, uh, but that is also affected. So this guy's gonna throw a firebomb. It's gonna blow up the whole, the whole room. Oh my God. I thought I gave myself enough space. And then he's going to come out and try to kill us. It's okay, we'll just backstab him. All right, so over here, there is an NPC right here named uh, Ostrava of Bulletaria. It's not his real name, but that's the name we know for now. So this is the guy who is always in trouble. You can see here, there's some draglings that are trying to kill him. So what we're going to do is there's a hint right here that likely says try rolling, which means press forward and circle. And then we can come up here and get the Thief Ring, which is a great, great ring. The Thief Ring makes it harder for enemies to detect us. And we're not going to use it right now, because uh, I'm going to use the Cling Ring in this playthrough. But uh, it's really effective for the Fourth World Shrine of Storms. So we'll talk to Ostrava. We're just going to skip his dialogue, but basically he's asking for help. So what we can do now is we're going to take out the Firebomb. Um, you want to try to save as many as you can for the boss, but take out a Firebomb throw it. That's going to kill a few of them at the same time. And then maybe wait for them to group up a bit closer together. That should be okay. Go ahead and drop that. 
Boom. Okay. Well, that's fine. I'm, I'm going to stop wasting them, but uh, unfortunately in Demon Souls, there's no plunging attacks, which is unfortunate. So you can't just drop off of a ledge, press R1, and deal, you know, a ton of damage to anything. Uh, you do just have to drop off yourself. But once all the draglings are down, Ostrava will drop, he will thank you, and he'll give you the Brass Telescope, which uh, is useful in the original, but not so much anymore because of photo mode. Uh, this is a booby trap right here. There's a couple Axe Knights in here. And luckily, Ostrava will help you, although he's not very strong. Yeah, see, he did one damage to that guy. Alright, and of course we accidentally attacked him, but <laughs> it's okay. As long as you don't wail on him, he won't turn hostile. Uh, the NPCs in Demon Souls are pretty forgiving in that sense. Uh, there is a Blue Eye Knight over here, along with a Scimitar. Alright, wait for him to be done with his chain, and then we can backstab him. And Ostrava's just gonna laze about and do nothing. He's really quite useless. Uh, but we need to protect Ostrava one more time. You don't need to, but if you want that mausoleum key later, you do need to. Okay, so coming in here, there's gonna be some draglings trying to ambush us, which is always fun. Go ahead and slice them up. And there's a crossbow knight or soldier right here. Okay. Boom, boom. Go ahead and grab this treasure, which is an unknown hero soul. And Ostrava will slowly but surely make his way down here. Um, so what we can do is we can take out a firebomb and then start baiting some of these enemies. Boom, just like that. Alright, and I think that's everybody. Oh, there's a couple more. Alright, there's one more in the barn. Oh, two more in the barn. A little stable, I should say. And down here is just some good uh, upgrade materials, but after you've done all this, Ostrava will just sort of walk back and forth uh, from where you first found him, uh, down, and then he'll walk into this area. He just sort of wanders around until you leave the level. Uh, but we are not going to leave the level for a little while. All right, so coming down here, there's another treasure over here. And these chairs. Okay, and then this will probably aggro. Yep, aggro an axe soldier. Go ahead and slice him up. Okay, and then you want to come over here, but there's some there's an ambush here, so you want to be very careful as you break away this debris. As you break the debris, yep, there he is. And there's also uh, some crossbow soldiers here as well. So you got to be very careful with what you're doing. Ugh. Okay. Yep. I I took a guess at that point because that. Uh, stable was blocking me, but yeah, once you kill them, just be careful with the crossbow uh, soldiers over here. There's a few of them. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to head up and then down just to get rid of the crossbow, the crossbows. Um, there's also a blue eye knight. So you got to be very careful as you're making your way over here. Alright. Grab the unknown warrior soul, and then you may be able to do this without going to the third level, but I prefer to. Come on down. Oh, God. Miscalculation on my part there. Oh, wrong item. All right, backstab him, and then we can go upstairs and uh, kill the crossbow soldier and then make our way over that ledge right there. Okay. Okay, get the late moon grass. Drop. And then now we can walk over here. Okay, so there's a bit of an ambush of soldiers here. So you gotta be very careful. At least I think there is. Am I remembering this correctly? Yep, there they are. Okay, so now that they're dead, we get the guillotine axe. That's a good drop. It's pretty rare, actually, to get that axe. Okay, so there is a spear soldier here, or halberd soldier. These guys are pretty deadly. They have a great range on you, so you got to be very careful when fighting them. And there is actually a vendor. Oop, there's another guy over here. Forgot about him. There is a dragling merchant 
down here. So this is a bit of a trap because there's all this debris here. The developers are trying to encourage you to slash at everything, and he's pretty hard to see. Um, but this vendor shows up in the first three stages of Bulletaria, and if you need any sort of you know minor upgrade materials, uh, you know, or some grass, firebomb stuff like that, it's a great uh, a great merchant for you. Uh, but we're not going to buy anything from him. We don't need it. He also tells the stories of Bulletaria every time you see him. So if you use this talk function, you can learn about what sort of happened in Bulletaria. All right, so there is, there was a soldier in here, but we killed him. This is the first area where we met Ostrava. So now that we're back here, uh, that's just sort of the alternate path. Uh, but that Dragling Merchant is, is very good to know about. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that you don't need to... Oh my god, you can actually drop from here. Oh my god. Um, never knew that. The Dragling Merchant doesn't need to be spoken to uh, in any area to progress him to another. Um, yeah, that's... I'm actually trying to think, aside from Ostrava, I don't think there's anybody like that. Um, but, um, yeah, you don't need to talk to him to get him to show up in 1-2 or 1-3. He will just always be there. Okay, so now that we are done with this section, we can traverse the next fog wall. And this is a pretty cool uh, little booby trap over here. There is a lot of enemies down this corridor. Use photo mode here. A lot of enemies there. But there's also a few balls locked away here. So if we just attack that and break it, these balls will just roll down and kill all these enemies for us. So it's very helpful to just trigger the booby trap yourself. Okay, but you do want to be careful because it's not guaranteed that it's going to kill everything. Uh, sometimes uh, it won't work. Okay, so you can see over there, there's a blue dragon. And we're going to go over there for a second and I'm going to show you something else. <sighs> All right, so there's going to be a couple of uh, spear enemies over here. So you got to be very, very careful. So spear enemies are really kind of the bane of your existence throughout Boletaria. They are very strong, and uh, they do a ton of damage. So you got to be very careful. Okay, so now that they are dead, go ahead and heal up. And then I'm going to show you the dragons. So there's two dragons over here in a roost. There's a red one and a blue one. And if you have the thief ring, you can kind of try to press your luck getting the treasures there, but you can kill them later on. So you can kill the red dragon in 1-2, and you can kill the blue dragon in 1-4. So you're not really meant to do this just yet. It's just kind of an indication of like, hey, there's dragons here, but you're able to kill them later, so just remember when you kill them to come back here. Um, and there's a purple flame shield there as well as uh, two rings. I think it's the Ring of Flame Resistance. or some. There's a couple rings there. Anyway, the Red Dragon will also terrorize this bridge. So you got to be very careful when traversing. And once you reach like a certain point on the bridge, the, dragon, the Red Dragon will leave its roost and uh, set this bridge on fire. So you want to try to bait out some of the enemies here. And then there he comes. Sometimes... Uh, the very first time he shows up on the bridge, he doesn't breathe fire. Yeah, it looks like he's not going to do it this time. Um, it seems like if you maybe go back to the stairs, he doesn't do it. Um, but we want him to burn up as many soldiers as we can get him to do. So he's going to come back. Yep, here he comes, I think. Hello? Hello? Mr. Dragon. Oh my god. Am I going to have to kill all these things manually? Oh no, here he comes, here he comes. There he is. Alright, so he's going to kill the rest of these soldiers here for us. And as long as you stand here, you're fine. Alright. But now we have to play this weird little mini game of will he or won't he? And <laughs> what you need to do is basically run as soon as you're able to, to avoid his next round of breath. So that's what we're gonna do now. He's basically just gonna fly in a loop and then we've got to make it to basically here and then avoid his flame breath. Wow, okay, so it's really hard. I don't recommend going back for any of the items on the bridge, it is not worth it. They're not that good. Um, okay, so now that we've done that, um, the dragon will just stay there. 
And then this opens up the final shortcut as well as access to the boss. So I'll let this cutscene play out just so you kind of see what happens. It opens up the giant portcullis at the beginning of the stage. And this basically makes it so if you die up here and you don't want to go get your souls, you can just walk straight to the boss. So the boss is now accessible, but we still have some work to do. All right, the dragon will stay loud. There's a bit of an ambush here, so you gotta be careful. Yep, there's the next one. Okay, so with the ambush foiled, we can come over here, break all this, and then there's a treasure up here. This is some more pine resin, which again, it's fire, it's very effective for the boss. Okay, there's a couple spear soldiers in here. So you gotta be very careful when kiting these guys out. Uh, one of them will throw fireballs, or firebombs at you, so you gotta be careful with them. Oh, Jesus. I managed to aggro both of them. Ugh. Okay. Yikes. The, the spear soldiers get me very nervous. They get me very nervous. Alright, so... Uh, oh, there's a sword soldier here. It's hard to see because it's like a little dusty in here. Alright, so on this staircase, we are now going to be introduced to the hoplites. And the hoplites are these weird... gooey things uh, that uh, we will have to fight... Uh, on mass in a few minutes when we fight the boss. Um, and these guys will throw spears at you, uh, as well as try to do like some standard melee attacks. These guys are very weak to fire. Um, and in addition to fire, they have a, a very strong shield that just sits in front of them. So what you gotta try to do is get behind them and then attack them. If you can manage to do that, they die in just a couple hits. Um, and, yeah, the, the spear stays active for way too long. But as you can see there, you get behind it, you hit it twice, it dies. Uh, but they can throw the spear at you as well, so they are also really devastating ranged enemies. And there are several on these staircases. So there's one right there. He's likely going to throw a spear. But we'll come out here, grab an unknown hero soul, and then make our way down. Yep, see, there, there you go. This one's easy enough to get behind, though. They have a rare chance of dropping their shield, I think. Maybe that was just added in the remake, or in the deluxe edition. Can't remember. Anywho. All right, so now that they're all dead, we can open up the final shortcut. And then we can now go to the boss. So all of 1-1 one, one is now clear up until the boss. We've killed every single enemy. We've gotten all the treasures outside of the world tendency room over there. And we're back. We're back here at the Archstone and the boss fog. So what you want to do is make sure you have your firebombs equipped to your, uh, your quick bar there. As well as some pine resin. And then what we're going to do is we're not going to use the pine resin just yet. What we're going to do first is we're going to use the firebombs. So go ahead and get those equipped. Walk through the boss fogs, and now we're going to fight Phalanx. And the boss is actually being protected by all these hoplites. So what we got to do is burn as many of them off as we can. And as we continue to kill them, the boss will sort of sludge around and pick up the other hoplites that are around the room. So you don't have to kill every single one of them, but you do need to kill the vast majority of them. So as you can see here, the boss is just sort of hanging out. Oh, God. And you want to use the pillars to help you out. And you can sort of see the green smoke in the middle of the boss. That's the actual boss that we got to kill. So you got to try to position yourself to get as many hoplites in one firebomb as possible. Yeah, we got a bunch there. Nice. Okay, you don't want to waste your firebombs on the boss itself. The boss itself cannot hurt you. So you really just want to try to take out as many hoplites as possible uh, in the room. So just keep positioning yourself. Just like that. I should kill a few. Oh, maybe just one. That sucks. Okay, and it's the same strategy as it was on the stairs. 
same enemies, same strategy. You want to just try to get behind them and then attack. But because there's so many surrounding the boss, they can easily overwhelm you and start throwing a bunch of spears at you. So it's, it's a relatively easy fight. And the boss can't hurt you, but you can get overwhelmed. And that's honestly like the story of Souls games. Is like, it's punishing and it's hard. But like once you kind of figure it out, you realize that really nothing is that big of a threat. That, that this was risky. Oof, God. Go ahead and throw another fireball. That killed a few. Cool. Nice, killed a few more. Um, you'll notice that there are a bunch of hop whoa, there are a bunch of hoplites that are just detached from the boss, just sort of hanging out. Uh, when you kill the boss, all of them die. So if you can get the boss into a decent position where you don't feel threatened and, you know, the boss isn't going to do too much to you, like, you know, you're sort of far away from the hoplites and nothing's... Oh, no, not good. Um, you know, bad things aren't going to happen to you. Then you can just sort of just take that as a, as a cue to just go for the boss. Um, I'm not 100% sure if when you kill the boss you get all of the hoplite souls. Um can't really remember if that's the case or not. Uh, but I like to kill as many as I can, just to be safe. I have died to this boss so many times. Just for my own hubris, really. That's sort of, again, the theme of Souls games. It's just, you're gonna get punished for being greedy. It's just kind of the way these games go. Oof. Yikes. Okay, so, go after it with the Pine Resin. I'm gonna heal up just to be safe. I don't want to get too... Oh, my God. Yeah, the, the spears stay active for so long. I don't want to get too greedy here. So I still want to take it kind of slow. All right, yeah. So basically, at this point, all the hoplites are on one side of the boss, so we can just sort of keep circling. And as long as it doesn't get to turn around, we're pretty much fine. Yeah, okay, so that one's that one there. I doubt it's going to be able to hurt us. Great, so that's the boss. All the hoplites are going to die. And then we get a whole bunch more souls. Don't forget to pick up the treasure around the room. There is quite a lot. And now that the boss is dead, the archstone has appeared. That allows us to transport our way out. Some upgrade materials around. I think that might be it. Yeah, okay, so once you're done, we can touch the archstone. And normally, since the boss is dead, this would end the tutorial, but since this is the first boss that we've killed, we are now able to level up. And I'm going to show you what else you need to do in the Nexus before you're able to actually move on. Um, so the Maiden in Black has shown up, but she will not level us up until we speak to the Monumental. And the Monumental is this strange child. That's probably not a child. Knowing how video games work and anime works, he's probably 4,000 years old. Um, but basically, the Monumental is at the very, very top of the Nexus. So that's where we got to go next. And after we talk to him, he will explain to us, you know, how the world of Boletaria works and what the Archstones are and all that. He'll give you a good lore dump, which I'm going to skip, even though I'm a huge fan of lore. And I normally never skip these things. But once you reach here, there's a bunch of children here. And there's one with a lit candle in front of him. And this is the Monumental we need to talk to. So, talking to the Monumental, we can just skip this cutscene, and then it says, By the power of the Monumental, the four sealed archstones have been unlocked. Great. So, now that the four sealed archstones are unlocked, I'm just going to come down here really quick and grab a treasure. And the treasures that are in the Nexus really aren't that great. Um, so, there's a few that you could try to get um, through some platforming, but it's really not worth it. It's just, I think, some half-moon grass or full-moon grass or something. Uh, which, I mean, it, it's good, don't get me wrong, it, it, it'll heal you right up, but, like, you really don't need it, and it's not worth dying over. Uh, but now that we have spoken to the Monumental and, and gotten that lore dump, what we can do now is we can level up with the Maiden in Black. So we can go back downstairs, and I will also take this opportunity to explain something, which is uh, a bit more information on World Tendency. So... Before I do that, let's go ahead and level up. Um, 
leveling up in Dark Souls is Im or in Demon Souls, sorry, it is important. But what's actually more important is upgrading your weapons. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and repair all of our equipment with uh, Baldwin here, and we're gonna see if we can upgrade our long sword again, which we can. We have four hard stone shards, and so we're gonna upgrade that to plus two. And the amount of damage you do is dependent on your level, but it's it's way more dependent on the weapons level itself. So upgrading weapons is infinitely more important than upgrading your stats. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so we can now spend all of our hard-earned souls with the Maiden in Black. We're going to seek soul power, and then I'll give you a quick explanation on the stats, although the remake does a pretty good job explaining it. So vitality increases your HP and item burden. Intelligence increases your maximum MP, which is the blue bar and magic memory, allowing you to attune more spells. Endurance uh, enhance, increases your amount of stamina, which is the green bar, your equipment burden, and some resistances. Strength increases uh, attack power for each hand. Dexterity strengthens physical defense and damage sustained from falling. But some weapons scale with dexterity more than they do strength, so you gotta be you got to watch out for that. Magic raises magic power. Faith raises miracle power. Uh, the amount of miracles you can know at a, excuse me at any given time, as well as magic defense, and then luck boosts item discovery and some resistances. Never put any points into luck; it's a complete waste waste of time. And as of this guide, the luck glitch has been patched, so it's a little unfortunate. It's patched on December fourteenth, which is when I'm recording this. So, as a soldier build, as a melee build, what we should be putting points into is strength, vitality, and endurance for the most part. So. I really prefer uh, vitality over anything. Just having more health is always better. Um, that, that's just me. So we'll go ahead and confirm that. And we need 829 souls to level again, but we only have 204 on our person. So it's time to start cracking open some souls. Let's go ahead and use some unknown warrior souls. Let's use five for a thousand souls. And then we can now level up again. Put some more points into strength. And we have 375 souls left over with 847 needed to level. Let's go ahead and use some more. Let's use these last two. It should be 500, 400. And then we'll use an unknown hero soul. Great for another 800. Okay. Go into strength again. And then we'll stop here. We'll sort of stop here at level 12. But now that we've killed Phalanx and we've spoken to the Monumental, we can now access any stage in the game or any archstone of the game, I should say. We still need to go through each of the worlds to unlock the other stages. Uh, world two is the archstone of the Digger King. This is uh, Stonefang Tunnel, it's a mine. World three is uh, archstone of the Tower Queen, which is Tower of Latria. This is the Latria Prison. Uh, this is a, a good stage, it's hard, it's a little confusing, but it's fun. This archstone right here is broken. Uh, unfortunately, this is cut from the original game, it was unfinished. So Blue Point did not add it in, unfortunately. The fourth Archstone is the Archstone of the Shadowmen. This is uh, the Shrine of Storms. There is an excellent, excellent starting game weapon here called the Crescent Falchion that is available right at the beginning. It takes a little bit to get to. You do have to be pretty good at parrying, honestly, um, in order to obtain it, but it's a very strong weapon. And uh, Crescent is a magic upgrade, and some enemies are weak to magic in the game, so it's a great bonus weapon, or a great weapon to get. And then this is the Archstone of the Chieftain, which is Value Defilement, and this is what will likely be your last world. Um, it is very difficult, but there is a Blessed Mace, which is a holy weapon, available in 5-1 here. So you'll hear me in these tutorials refer to these worlds as World 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then their subsequent stages as like 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, stuff like that. So the level we just completed was 1-1, or level 1, 1, Gates of Voltaria. And now the next level we're going to do is the Lord's Path, which is level 1-2. That'll be the next tutorial. It's a quick level. Um, and then once you complete this stage, you are sort of, you're at a hard stop in World 1. You cannot proceed until you fully complete another world. So basically the way these guides will go is I'm going to do them a little bit out of order just because basically the first stage of every Archstone is the easiest um, and the bosses really aren't that threatening at all. Most of them are just kind of gimmicky. Um, but what we will likely do is I'll do uh, one, two next, and then we'll go to two, one, uh, which is uh, Stonefang Tunnel. And then 
I will probably go to 4 1 after that um, to get the Crescent Falchion, uh, which the boss of 2 2 is weak to. So you do them a little bit out of order, which is nice. Kind of gives you a bit of variety, spice of life. Um, but yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I hope this tutorial was helpful, but you can leave a comment if you need any help. Um, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And yeah, subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new tutorials go live. I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.